Welcome back, YCN Sports Talk, Jeremy Stout, Dustin Ribellini. We have one final segment. We'll switch over to the hardwood, get into the Celtics. We haven't talked a lot about the Celtics this year, much at all, really. Kind of hitting that halfway point, so yep. I figured that would be a good time to start. Uh, and a lot of people start tuning in in the second half. Some people say, well, the NBA is kind of boring before the All-Star break. What is that record? You have that? 26 and 15, so they're actually right at the halfway point. Yeah, of the season. exactly. 41 games. So good start. Yep. C- clearly, what they is it what they expected? Is it right where they are, they should be? Uh, number three seed in the East. Is this basically what they are going to be? A three seed. They're not going to challenge the Cavs, but we thought at the beginning of the season on our radio show we talked about maybe they could challenge Toronto for number two, losing to Toronto earlier this month. Is that now? Number three is, is kind of what they're going to get. They're only two games behind Toronto right now, so it's not like they're out of the question for the two seed. Right. I do think right now, as built, the Raptors are slightly better than the Celtics because the Celtics are still, I think, missing that one piece to get them to the next level. But I think the Celtics are right where they want to be. You look at preseason, they're predicted in, by the book by the people that set the lines about 50 wins. Right now they're on pace for 52, so they're pretty much right where they're supposed to be. Yep. It's just a matter of, will Toronto, I mean, Toronto's 28-13, pretty good record through 41 games, only a game and a half behind the Cavaliers. So are they going to keep playing at that high level? That's what you wonder. With the Celtics... It, right now, it's all Isaiah Thomas. We saw right. again the other night, I think he had 37 points, 17 or so in the fourth quarter. Leads the NBA in fourth quarter scoring. He's really doing a lot for this team. Al Horford with 22 the other night. With the Celtics, consistency is the big word I look for. You see some games where they come out against lower teams. We saw a couple weeks ago against the 76ers. Yeah. They took them down to the flat. wire. So you wonder, again, long NBA season, can they sustain this play with really one true scorer throughout the season. And, and that's what I wanted to talk about also is what has impressed you. And obviously Isaiah Thomas and Al Horford have been very impressive. And uh, is, does Al, is Al Horford doing what he was supposed to do, what they wanted him to do? Uh, I know his role has kind of evolved from what it used to be with the Hawks because they have the scorer in Isaiah Thomas. He's a distributor. He's a rebounder. He still scores. But is he giving them enough or does he need to maybe give them a little bit more scoring? I think he's giving them enough defensively because I think what we don't see is how well Al Horford rotates on defense, help, plays help defense, he blocks two or three shots a game. I think that's where the Celtics really needed the help is they didn't have any big men last year. So I think he's doing what he, he's never been a big scorer. He's not going to average 20 points a game. Right. That's just not who he is. I think he's doing enough on and off the court that we don't see to be more of a leader on this team. Okay, and this team going forward probably looks like the team is going to be intact. They're not going to be trading any big players away. No. They're not going to be making any big moves. A lot of people have talked about maybe DeMarcus Cousins at some point That's coming not going in. To happen. Yeah. Maybe a New Orleans Noel on a, on a lesser level or somebody else, a role player type person. But this roster is basically going to stay the way it is. Yeah. You don't see anyone. I don't see much, I don't see much this year. Maybe a small move for like maybe ship away a draft pick for a yeah. sixth or seventh man. But this starting five is going to be intact all season. All right. Now we go over to the coaching side. Brad Stevens finally has some expectations going into the season. In the first two years, obviously, he didn't have a lot of talent. He was building it up. He overachieved the, ta- the talent level every year. Now it looks like he's going to be held to some responsibility. Is he, is he fitting that what you expected, or can, you, can he get a little bit more of those flat efforts that we might see? Is that on him more or the players? Well, I think to, he is kind of doing what they expected. You see every year has been better. Right. You know, they, got, they only had, what, 20 wins or so the first year, 40. Then last year they made the playoffs, lost in the first round. So I think for Brad Stevens, from his side, you've got to keep that progression going. If they win a playoff series this year and get to the semifinals, say they drop to the Raptors, Sure, not a bad year. If they get to the conference finals, great season. Right. Because this team's not going to challenge Cleveland. We know that. They're not going to challenge the Cavaliers. Right. So, so as for long Brad as it's Stevens, not... it's just keep, keep that uptick going. Keep seeing some progression. And I think he's doing a heck of a job. Right. So as long as it's not a first round right. blowout or a second right. round sweep or something Correct. like that, he's, he's doing okay. And actually, the Celtics take on the New York Knicks tonight. tonight. So hopefully they can get a win there. Talk that would be the dis- <laughs> Talk about a team going the wrong direction. Yeah, that would be a disappointment. So we'll keep our eyes on the Celtics as the second half of the NBA season progresses. YCN Sports Talk Picks of the Week are brought to you by Salt Hill Pub with locations in Lebanon, Hanover, Newport, and Newberry. Whether you're in the mood for a quick lunch, a great steak, their signature fish and chips, a fresh salad, or the best burger in town, Salt Hill Pub has you covered. And yes, everything on their lunch and dinner menu is available for takeout. All right, here we are. Another week, Dustin. Like I said at the beginning, you were 4-0. It's so hot, Jeremy. I know. You better keep it going here, so I'll stay back and watch you. First game, NFC Green Bay at Atlanta. It's going to be a high-scoring game, like we said. A lot of points on both sides. Neither defense is great. I just think, in the end, Aaron Rodgers, yeah. again, 
too much. He's playing well. Uh, now that I know your pick, I'm gonna. I wish I could change mine, but you know what? I gotta stick to him. Atlanta's hot. I think it's gonna be a close game. Great game at the end. So I'm gonna go with Atlanta at home. Final game in the Georgia Dome. Going to the AFC pit in New England. New England about a six-point yeah, favorite. Yeah, six-point six favorite. It's going to be a close game. Like you said, the Steelers have a lot of weapons. Bell, 170 last week. Brown with a big game. For me, in the end, too much New England at home. New yeah. gets it done. I think they do. They're, they're four and one in the AFC championship games at NFC home. Champion. Sorry, AFC. Sorry. AFC yeah. at home. So I think that they will get it done. Let's hope because, you know, they keep getting into these games and they need to start making it to the yep. Super Bowl. So I think they do get it done and they win that game. So we got one different and one All the right. same. So we'll see what happens. If you're waiting to tune into the uh, YCN Game of the Week, which usually follows us, you're going to have to wait till tomorrow night. Uh, Kearsarge Lady Cougars travel to their I-89 rivals, the Hawks of Hoppington. So that's Thursday night at 8 p.m. And every night we premiere on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching.